if you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. We are doing our Ascend Friday where we do readings, healings, guided meditations, shamanic journeys, all the ways in which we show the magic in the world. And so today we are going to do a reading for Colleen Seavey. We're going to do my spiritual evolution energy review process, which we affectionately refer to as the seer readings, the seer sessions. And we're going to do one for her business today. And so Colleen runs a smaller business. And so when we do this kind of reading for a small business owner, then what we're doing is basically a personal reading that's expanded to you know talk about the impacts that these things have on your business as well. If this were a corporate, if somebody owned a big business or something like that, the reading would look very different. Um, but this is this is how these work for smaller business owners. So, all right. So Colleen, I'm going to just go through the process with you so that you understand what to expect. Are you familiar with the chakra system? Yes, I am. Okay, great. And, and tell us what your business is. My business is a holistic woo-woo, like the majority of us are. Yeah. I do. I'm a Reiki master, energy healer, a biofield tuning, sound practitioner, astrologer, I do Akashic Records, intuitive health coaching, numerology. I'll blend in there some finch way. It's catered to people are called to me for different reasons, but I, I help with trauma, relieving trauma in their field. And then I kind of give them the goods and then they go off on their way. A lot of them are projectors. It seems to be I've been pulling projectors into my field because I'm a projector. Okay, kind of this is what you got to do for 2027, you know, and I did. Yeah. So that's what I find. It, I'm getting projectors. <laughs> I can't. Okay. So, and we're talking about human design in that, in that yeah, way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just human so design. people know, because some people may not know what that is. Yeah. So, okay. And so you're basically working one-on-one. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. That, that lets me know what I'm looking for there. Okay. So the, the process is that I'm going to come in, I'm going to look at the, the things that surround you and your business. I'm going to look at your aura itself. I'm going to look at each of the chakras individually, tell you what the blocks are that I'm seeing in the chakras and how those blocks may be playing out in your life and your business. If there's a quick answer, I will give it to you in the moment. If not, we will talk about it at the end and we will look for common themes and how those work. I'm also going to help you identify what blocks are things to actually work on versus things that are blocks that are just a function of something else. So it's a symptom. So it's not worth working on. A lot of people get stuck in their own process because they work on things that are symptoms rather than causes. And so this helps to identify that for you. Um, and then the, the thing to, to keep in mind is that as you are going through your process in life, you will have different levels of work that you're working on. When you come into a level new, you will have a lot of blocks. When you are finishing an old level, you'll have fewer blocks. Do not take the number of blocks as a report card for your life. It is just a statement of where you are in your process on this particular level. Okay. So we're going to just start with that. And then we can blame it on the eclipse. It's the new energy coming in. <laughs> oh my God, the eclipse. Don't get me started. Wow. It's been a, been a freaking roller coaster ride. Of, no, it's been a ride down the rapids. That's what it's been. <laughs> like class five rapids, man. Yeah, it's been, been crazy. So uh, the other piece is to keep in mind that I am channeling when I'm doing this. So ask your questions in the moment. Feel free to interrupt me if you have questions. I, I will ask you not to do a lot of story when you ask your questions, because otherwise we'll be here for two hours. Okay. And so, but do ask questions as you go, because if you ask me two days from now, I may or may not remember because right. my brain doesn't store the memories in the same way because I'm channeling. So, mm -hmm. okay. Any questions before we get started on the reading? No. Okay. I want right. to make sure what it was today. I, like I said, I couldn't remember. So I'm excited. I thought <laughs> we, were, we thought we were doing shadow work with the, because I'm trying to remember the last meeting he was talking about the the shadow side or whatever. I was trying to remember. 
Oh like, yeah, we were talking about yeah. So Colleen is from my uh, spiritual coach mastermind group, and uh, we we had a conversation about the pain body. That's what it was. The pain body. That one of our questions. <laughs> one of our, our other members asked about the pain body, and we'll, we'll yes. have a conversation about so, it. So no, we are not doing that today. Yeah. This is this is a reading to help you figure out what's in the way of your business being a resounding success. So. Yeah. So I really appreciate you coming on the show and being willing to to do this and for the public and let people know how that works. So are you ready to get started? I'm ready. Let's go. Fantastic. All right. So give me a second. Do I have permission to enter your energy field for the purposes of this reading? Yes, you do. All right. Give me one moment. If you have any shields up that, that you may want to just give permission for me to be inside those shields right now. So I'll be right there. Okay. So I'm going to take a look at the outside of your aura right now and see what the outside influences, if any, are that are relevant to this reading. Hmm. Okay. So this may actually be a function of your shield. But what I'm seeing is a dog circ circling you and barking and like, trying to protect you from everything around you. Does that sound familiar for you with your shield? No. no. That's a okay. one on me. <laughs> okay. So then then this is relevant to your work. So there, it, it, this is very interesting um, because this dog is actually barking and like driving things away. Okay. I always have to ask when I see stuff like this. I mean, I came into somebody's aura once and I saw flying robots and I was like, what is this? And she's like, how did you see my flying robots? They were part of her shield. Right. So, um, but the, so this, because it's not part of your shield, I'm what I'm, this is a metaphor for what's going on with your business. Okay. So you have a protective energy that you are using to like drive some things away drive people away, right? This is a, it doesn't feel like it drives everyone away. It's just driving some people away. And so I don't know if you've set intentions for your business that you only want to work with certain people or something like that, but this feels like it's, I would say energetically, as I feel into this, I would say maybe two out of 10 people who would come to you are coming through because of this dog. Mm, that's very interesting. Do you, it's funny because when I was in a guided meditation before on a group Akashic Records reading, when I shut my eyes, I saw this like beagle looking dog looking at me in the meditation. But no, I mean, I've had to been, I, I was taught to shield myself with so many different ways, but a dog wasn't one of the shieldings. And it was more when I was getting hit by dark energies coming through to keep them out, not per se for clients. But I was told for niching purposes, I needed to narrow my field. In. Yes. I agree with that from a business so, perspective. This is this feels like something that you set up to protect you that has has overstepped its boundaries and is keeping clients away. Okay. Okay. So what I'm what I'm looking at is okay, let me let me see if I can get more information. Hold on. Yeah, so this is this is a defensive posture. I'm trying to talk to it and it won't talk to me. It's just barking at me and barking me, barking me and saying, go away, go away, go away. And I'm like, hmm, okay. So did you set an opening for me in your shield so that I could get in? Because I'm going to have to get into your aura to, to yeah, do this. Yeah, I'll do it again. Because you're the only one that's ever asked me. I mean, people will normally say, do you have permission to enter into your space? But then you did it a step further when you asked about lowering your shield. So well, I don't want you to lower your shields. I want you to just make a Kelly sized hole for it. Yes. Okay. I don't yes. want you to lower your I shields. Because that's you specifically. Yeah. Just for me. Um, and just for this reading. 
Okay. All right. Now it's starting to calm down. Okay. Yeah. So this is, um, as I'm talking to it, what it's telling me is that there are, and basically it's assuming everybody is a problem until they prove otherwise. And so this may not be your best approach for clients. You may want to retask that, uh, not may, you do want to retask this part of your, your shields to be only entity related, right? Okay. So that it's not human related. Okay. Okay. You can do other things to protect yourself from entities attached to humans, but you, you definitely want to want to make it clear that this is entity related, right? Okay. Because it's it's literally driving away eighty percent of the people who would come to you, and that's okay. not, not optimal. So, okay, let me see. Let me just test the field to see if, how that works. If you do that, yeah, you're fine. Otherwise, okay, that'll work. So, okay, as we sink into, I'm going to come into your aura now because that was the only thing relevant on the outside. All right, let's see what's here. All right, so I've got this image of you as a clown juggler on a unicycle. And I'm hearing do 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 right. There's like this this constant flurry of activity, right? It's I'm juggling, I'm trying to stay upright on a unicycle, I'm trying to entertain everybody, and I don't know how long I can do this. There's this sort of energy about that. Does that feel right to you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is a indicator that you are. So there, there, there are many pieces in this image. So piece number one is that you're putting on a face. Literally, you are in clown makeup. So like nobody can see your face, right? So you're putting on an image and, and you're trying to entertain and you're trying to do too much at once. Okay, so all of these pieces are in place in just the beingness here. So we'll talk about each of those pieces as we go through the chakra system. We'll talk about the face in the third chakra. We'll talk about the doingness in the seventh chakra. And we'll talk about the entertainment piece in the third chakra. Okay. So all of these things we'll, we'll address. But just so you know that those are, those are all inherent within this one image. This is why I love the, the language of spirit is that they can just give me everything in one image. It's perfect. So, okay. Um. Uh, and, and there's this in, okay. So the other piece that they're telling me, I miss, I missed something is that the, there's this energy of being the sideshow because you're not the ringleader, you're the clown, right? And so instead of directing a whole bunch of things happening and, and being the main attraction, you're the comic relief, right? And so this is not taking yourself seriously piece. Okay. It's, it it feels like it's, you said all things woo woo, right? And there's an energy about the woo woo thing that, that, you know, people poo poo the woo woo, right? And when we internalize that poo pooing, we become the sideshow, right? So it feels like you've, have you only recently come out of the spiritual closet? My awakening was 2019. So that's from what I hear still recent, you know, because I was working on all my trauma healing. But even in my family, they don't quite get it. I haven't really met local community that get it. Some of the stuff I talk about seems to be over some people's heads. But my family in general don't take me seriously. I can come in and clear them. And they say the NyQuil did it. You know, I can give them a tuning session. And then they say, oh, it wasn't the tuning session. It was somebody else talking to me on the phone. So then it's like, and then I wasn't getting the clients. And I'm like, 
Well, clearly, if I knew what I was doing and I was helping people, I'd be attracting more clients because that's what projectors are supposed to do. We're supposed to be attracting these people. So when you don't get it, then you don't feel validated that you are the real show. You are the real deal. And then you're like, well, maybe I am just a clown because you you see all these people and all these you know, social medias that are doing it, that are hustling and, and yet projectors aren't supposed to be at that hustling level, but still we're, we're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose. That was the whole point of my awakening. I was told I was meant to be a healer and I'm like, I'm here ready to heal. Where are these people? Yeah. So, and when you have it in your own family that don't even quite understand what's going on and that's yeah. all you have around you. Yeah. yeah. So I can see that where I've kind of, yeah. yeah. So, so th this is a good awareness and a good time to make yourself the ringleader instead of the sideshow. Yeah. And I would say stop working on your family if they don't appreciate it. Well, that's what I did. I've kind of put my boundaries up and I don't even talk to them anymore, really. Yeah. I had to cut them all out. They're all toxic and they have entities in them and they're all narcissists. <laughs> Let's just hey, leave well, them. <laughs> that's a good, good reason to leave them be. So they, they serve their purpose. They got you to where you needed to be in order to. Exactly. So, so here's, here's one of the things that, that we don't talk about a lot, but those of us who are meant to be on a spiritual path or, or to be of contribution to the world, we, we come through toxic and traumatic environments because it deepens our container. It deepens our ability to hold, right? But in the process of doing so, it puts holes and tears in our, in our identity and our, our, our energetic container, right? And so the healing work we have to do to not be wounded healers is to do the trauma work on ourselves, do, a, do our shadow work and things like that. And, but to do your shadow work, you have to actually solidify your container first. And a lot of people try to do the shadow work before they try to solidify their container. And so I don't recommend that. <laughs> if you have a great sense of, of self-preservation, then nothing will happen you won't get anywhere. If you have a terrible sense of self-preservation, which most of us do, you'll re-traumatize yourself if you try to do the work before you solidify. So you need to be able to hold a container for yourself. And so that's, that's my work in the world is getting people ready to do the shadow work, right? So anyway, all right. So we have a view of what we're dealing with, right? And I, this feels like it's going to be a theme throughout your, your reading. So we'll, we'll be probably digging back to this periodically. So let's hop into the seventh chakra and see what we find. Hold on. Okay. Good energy flow through the crown chakra in and out. It looks great. Let's see. Yep. Your guides are happy with their ability to talk to you. It sounds like you listen to them even when you're not doing readings for others. So that's a bonus. A lot of us don't. We just had that conversation with Michelle on the last reading. Um, and because she and I both have that problem where we read for others, but forget to listen for ourselves sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, but it sounds like you, it feels like you've got that covered. Let's see here. You know, your channel, that's all set. Energy's coming through well on that. You do have the mind on overdrive thing going on, trying to figure it all out, trying to figure it all out, trying to figure it all out. Um, but as uh, it feels like it, that's a symptom. And so as we, as you get the answers here today, I feel like that's going to go away and you're going to be able to relax more because you understand your nature. And, and therefore, you know, once you get some answers, I think you'll be okay with this one. Uh, let's see here. So I'm not getting, a, I am getting some blockage in the masculine energy. And so that energy is around focus and structure and directed movement and things like that. It's, it's around picking a path and, and sticking to it and being consistent and all of that. I feel like there is some blockage there for you. Um, it feels like it's related to your father, interestingly, that there's, hold on. Does your dad own a business? He's, 
got a side thing going. He's retired, but he's doing a side thing. It's very interesting that you said that because another channeler said your dad's affiliated with your money. So if you have a bad relationship with your father, your money's not good. He's one of the narcissists that has been married for years to a woman that's very bad for him. I've tried to help heal him. He talks to Jesus. He can speak in tongues. And I literally talked to my grandmother on the other side. I'm like, dad's not listening, grandma. Knock, knock some sense into him. And somebody literally punched him in the face. And I go, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> but he's one of the toxic people. And he just... You know, he had promised me some money at one point. He's promised me money all my life and I finally needed it. And I, and I called him out in it. And then he reverts back to, and this is how I knew he was a narcissist. He blamed my mother for leaving him when, when I was a child. I'm like, one has nothing to do with the other. Right. So I had to cut him off. So Hulk try to call and just want to have lunch. And I'm like, it's beyond me being in your energy anymore. You're not listening to me and I don't want a relationship. And I even said to my guides, I said, there's got to be another way to heal this father wound, go into the, the Akashic records because this man is not getting it. And it's bad for my vibration to be even in his presence because he's not okay. listening. To yeah. Me. So I'm going to, I'm going to say this healing your father wound is not about your father. Okay. Okay. Um, it is. It is one of the most rare things for you to actually be able to heal your parental room wounds with your parents. It is very rare that that ever happens. So right now so I'm not yeah. balanced. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this work for 50 years and I've seen it like twice. Okay. <laughs> it's just it never... Maybe that's why my mind was going looping too, like trying to yeah. figure out how to. <laughs> yeah. So healing your wound with your parents is never about your parents. So what you have to do is you have to pull back the, the, the blame. And instead of saying, you didn't give me this, you have to say, I didn't get what I needed. Right. Because whenever you point the finger at someone, you give them your power at the same time. So when you say, I didn't get what I needed, then it becomes, I am now capable of giving myself what I need. Right. So I didn't get what I needed here. How do I make sure that never happens again? Right. Mm -hmm. So in this case, and it does feel like your dad is associated with the money piece for you. Mm -hmm. It feels like that's how he controlled you. Right. Or uh, controlled your expectations, I think is a better term. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so since you are setting expectations as a projector, your, your expectations are creating the, the, the magnetism. Right. And so since he's been setting your expectations and dashing them over and over again throughout your life, that becomes your expectation is that your expectations will be dashed, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to set small expectations on a regular basis and, and then prove to yourself that they get met. So pick things that you know are going to be fulfilled, okay? So I expect that my coffee will be made in the morning uh, when I do the right things to make it happen. Oh, look, I, I put my coffee and everything in the machine. I hit the button and it was fulfilled. My expectation was fulfilled. I mean, very small things, mm -hmm. right? Because we have very small things every single day that we don't pay attention to that are expectations that are fulfilled. And you are just used to looking at the big ones that he set for you and seeing them dashed and you're not seeing all the things that are fulfilled, so I want you to really start to notice all of the expectations that you have every day. I get up in the morning and I put my feet on the floor and I don't float off the bed because I, I expect that gravity will work, right? That's an expectation, right? I expect that I'll be able to get up out of the bed. I ex that happened, right? I, I want you to really notice how much of what you do in life is fulfilled through your expectations because you need to rewire that for your brain, and if you find a rewire, I've been on EF, EFT and neurogenics and RTT. <laughs> yeah. so, but, yes. but the smaller you start, the more evidence you'll have. Yeah. Right. And so I, I because in the morphic field of the energetics of the, the, the universe and the quantum field, the size of the expectation is irrelevant. Okay. You could expect to be president of the United States, or you could expect that your coffee maker will work. 
Okay. They are exactly the same in the morphic field. So we can retrain it through very small things and then that will translate to larger things over time. Okay. 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 So, all right, let's see here. All right. That's it for the seventh chakra. Let's come into the sixth. Normally I start with a transmitter and receiver, but I'm being pulled into the owning your power piece. So let's do that one. Interesting because I feel like you, you have the, it's like, you're okay with your power. You, you don't have a problem with your power, but you also don't want to share it. There's a, it's a, hmm, how do I say this? Translating energetics into words, sometimes difficult. Hold on. So for a lot of people, it's a, I don't want to be killed for my gifts. They don't want to share for that reason because I was killed for my gifts and gifts in another lifetime. But I feel like it's a, I won't be appreciated. So why bother? Mm -hmm. it, it feels like it's, it's, ooh, oh, there it is. So it's a, Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what the dog is. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. uh, yeah. Okay. So it's a worthiness piece on the part of the clients. It's, are you worthy to have my gifts given to you? Because if you won't receive them and take them in exactly as I give them to you, then you can't have it. It's, it's, that's the energy that I've got here. And that's the dog. Okay. And the dog is saying that 80% of the people are not worthy because they won't take it all in. Okay. It's not your job to worry about what they take in. It's your job to give them the reading they've paid for. Give them the session they paid for. It's not your job to care whether or not they take it, to receive it, to use it, to give acknowledgement that you did it. It's not your job right? Your job is to just do the service that they've paid for and move on, right? This piece is a, it's around your personal value, okay? It's a, I'm not going to put up with anybody who's not going to fully receive me. And here's the, here's the statement of truth, which is that most people can't fully receive you. They haven't done their inner work, that's why they're asking for readings. They're in the beginning stages of their spiritual process and they have not finished their work yet. And therefore, they're only going to be able to receive what they can receive. It's not your job to worry about that. And you're going to, you know, one of the things that I tell people about when we do these readings is that, you know, listen to the recording over and over and over again, because on the eighth or 10th listening, you're probably going to hear something you never heard before because you weren't ready to hear it yet. Right. And so this is the thing is that people may not receive what you have to give them for 10 or 20 years. It, it's not your problem. Right. You can only do what you can do and you have to let it go. And so it's not a waste of your gifts to give it. You're planting a seed. If someone can't receive what you're offering them, you're planting a seed, right? So I tell people all the time because they're like, I, when I, I, I do a lot of training for spiritual teachers, right? I have my spiritual coach certification and I train spiritual teachers. And, and one of the things that I talk about a lot is you cannot get attached to the positive or the negative feedback because the first person to tell somebody something is an asshole. The 10th person to tell somebody something is like, yeah, 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 I've heard that. And the 20th person to tell somebody something is, oh, you're a miracle worker. Oh my God, you're amazing, right? Because they're finally ready to hear it, okay? You can plant the seed and be the asshole and that's okay, right? And you can be the last person to tell them and they finally get it. And either in, in any case, you're still you. Their response is just a function of where they are in their journey, mm -hmm. right? So nothing we do is wasted. It's just not ready to be fully integrated yet. And it each one, each piece gives them a step towards the next piece. Make sense? Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So when you can accept and integrate that, the dog will be fine. Okay. You know, you won't have that problem. Okay. 
Great. Okay. Now let's talk to transmitter and receiver. Mm. Transmitter's good. Mm, okay. So you've got a strong transmitter going out, but you're receiving back very little of what you potentially could. And I think part of that, let me feel into that. Part of that is feeling responsible for what the messages are that you're getting back. It's like, there's a, I don't know if I want to be responsible for telling somebody everything. And again, this is a, this is a taking responsibility for other people thing. Okay. Other people are competent humans. Your job is just to give them the information you get, right? There's a, a piece of this. Yeah. And that probably comes from the fact that what I'm sharing now, whether it's family or clients, and it's going on deaf ears, and if I'm getting more information and they don't listen to it, then it pisses me off that much more that they're not integrating right. it. <laughs> right. So this is this is you being attached to their outcome. Okay. Because I feel like I need to help raise everybody up. We all got to go up together. We got to go up. To, I'm here to help you. Let's go. Let's raise the roof. Right. <laughs> So, but that's about you. That's not about them. Yeah. Right. And and this is, I, I had this too. So please do not think that this is just you. I, I, I haven't talked to anybody who, who didn't go through this stage at some point. Um, but there, that's about you needing to prove your value. And that's about you needing to be of service to the universe. And that's about you feeling like you, you're on task. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're doing what's in front of you. And that is all you can ever do right? You're, you're doing your piece. And if your piece is to talk to people who don't hear you, okay, they don't hear me. Not my problem. I'm doing my piece, right? You, you are exactly where you're supposed to be doing exactly what you're supposed to do in any given moment. The challenge that you're having is that you're not accepting that what is, is what's supposed to be. Okay. You know, you're planting a lot of seeds. You're just not seeing the bloom, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're going, why aren't you blooming? And literally, you have a seed in your hand and you're just putting the dirt over it and going, why aren't you blooming, right? <laughs> There's some organic miracle grow. Come on now. Come on. Bloom, damn you. Bloom. <laughs> some alkaline water. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, you know, I, I want to give you that metaphor so that when somebody's not taking it in, you can just uh -huh. say, ah, seed planting. We'll late, we'll, uh -huh. we'll just throw a little water on it and let it go. <laughs> Walk away <laughs> come back several months later. There will be flowers in okay. several years in people time, but yes. Um, so that's, that's the piece. And when you are more attached to the outcome than the client, especially if you're in a coaching position, which you didn't say you were doing, but if you're ever in a coaching position, you cannot be more attached to the outcome than the client is because then you end up manipulating them rather than coaching them. And that is never a good thing. That makes the space unsafe for them and they will never actually make progress. Okay. So you have to let go of your attachment to the outcome. We, as coaches and healers, we often get attached to the outcome because we go, well, if you get better then I'm a good healer or I'm a good coach, but if you don't, then it's all my fault. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is committed to not healing, <laughs> you can be the best coach on the planet. It will not make any difference. Right. So if they're committed to their resistance, you know, you can only lead a horse to water. You cannot make a drink, right? So you have to invest from the outcome, okay? Okay, let's, let's come in here. It also feels like you're, you're focusing on people who are very early stage. Like you're like looking for the people who can make the biggest shifts, which means you're starting with people who are like really not ready to be woken up, right? I, I they're finding me different okay. people find me for different reasons yeah but it, i haven't yeah it just it feels like you're attracting early stage people because you have this need to be amazing 
Okay. And to be able to do huge quantum leaps. And I will tell you that people who are further along are capable of quantum leaps. People who are in the early stages are rarely capable of quantum leaps. They're, they're usually walking in baby steps because there's so much fear and resistance that they're trying to work through. Okay. okay. People who are further along have faced their fears enough that they can quantum leap because they, they know how to deal with the fear and the, the resistance. So, you know, but they're in your, in your mind, you're thinking, oh, well, they're very beginning. If we just take them here, the world changes faster, right? <laughs> you know? Probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, either continue working with the people you're working with and let go of the quantum leap idea or, you know, work with people who are further along so that the quantum leap can happen. But I, ideally, I would really just work on your inner stuff around needing to be a bigger service than, than is intended for you right? You have your piece to do. You are a cog in a massive machine. As long as you are doing your piece, you are doing your job. If you try to be a bigger cog and your space in the machine is this big, now you're, now you're not actually doing your job, right? So do what your piece is to do, and then you can be part of the bigger machine and be part of the bigger ch shift. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And as you evolve, your cog will automatically get bigger and the space for it will get bigger. Okay. All right. So, all right. Um, okay. Let's look at the receiver. Mm -mm. Okay. Receiver's closed. So the receiver is typically what we think of as our intuition, picking up on the energies around us. I'm not surprised that yours is shut down. It's, it's not blocked. It's just shut down. So you could open it up. When we live in a toxic environment for a long time, and we don't want to pick up on the things around us, we, we will sometimes close our receiver. <laughs> um, so, you know, this would just be a matter of practicing opening it up. So this is, this is picking up on things around you that, you know, like somebody, you think of somebody you haven't talked to in 20 years and they call you that sort of thing, right? It's a, it's what's in your environment, not the active going out to the Akashic, bringing the information back. That's the transmitter, but the receiver is just picking up on what's there, right? So I would recommend spending some time in meditation and just focusing on receiving through your third eye, the stuff in your environment, and that'll fix that one. That's a quick fix. Okay. Right. I'm going to come down into the fifth chakra. Okay. See you all? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the reflection of your self-expression. And so... It's open. There is energy coming out. So you're actively expressing yourself. It's open that much. Could be, could be that, but it's right now, uh, which is actually in my mouth. It's kind of a comfortable place. It's not quite as wide as open as comfort would allow for. That's actually comfortable for me. So it's about two thirds of the way there. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. It, it feels like you're, you're, getting your message out, right? So that, that feels pretty good from a business perspective. There's room for a little bit more, but I think what you've got is good. Okay. Well, let me check what else is going on in here. Nope. People pleasing communication is good. Uh, no dependence on asking permission. You're good on that. You're standing in your power there. So we are doing the hiding your true self and unwilling to be vulnerable piece, which we knew from the clown, right? The wearing a mask, right? It's like, I'm putting forth the face of what I want people to see of me rather than the truth of who I am. Okay. This is a defensive mess mechanism from your childhood. You're surrounded by narcissists. Big surprise. You do not want to let people see who you are because it gets used against you. Okay. However, you are standing in your power pretty well. And so so long as you are willing to hold and enforce your own boundaries, there's really no risk to being seen anymore. This is just an old pattern that you're holding on to. And so I would invite you to embrace the risk. 
And to so one of the things that happens when we're in fear is that we we say, well, ah, what would I do? It's just make a plan. You know, if somebody comes at your face, what are you going to do? Here's my plan. I will do this, right? And then you don't have to get caught off guard, right? You can just be like, oh, somebody comes at my face. I could say no. <laughs> it's my favorite answer to anybody who comes at my face. The first thing they get is a no, because I'm like, mm, we're not doing this, right? And so, you know, you just make a plan and and then you you should be able to, you know, let me check. Mm. Yeah, this one, this one's, this one's going to give with that. Okay. So I, I think you're okay on this. All right, let's come. That's everything in the fifth chakra. That was fast. All right. So let's, let's do the, the fourth chakra. Lots of heart energy going out. Teeny tiny little bit of energy coming in. Teeny tiny, like like the smallest line of energy coming in. So it's better than nothing. But I will say that oftentimes your ability to receive love is often equated with your ability to receive money. And so especially since your dad is associated with the money piece, I think that that's, that's probably true for you. Um, and so working on learning how to receive love would be a really good thing for you. I, I gave this to Michelle as well, so I'm going to give it to you. It, go out into the world and receive love from strangers. No, I'm not saying sleep around. What I'm saying is... <laughs> <laughs> My spirit guides won't allow that anyway. They, 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 they cock walk. <laughs> what i'm saying is that as you're walking around on the street as you're driving around in traffic every time somebody lets you out in traffic or moves out of the way on the sidewalk or holds a door for you or smiles at you or says something nice receive it as a gift of love it's it's very easy to practice receiving love from strangers because we don't feel like we have an obligation to them right and so especially when we come in environments where love comes with an obligation and we refuse to receive the love because we don't want to receive the obligation, right? With, with strangers, it's easier to practice this because you're never going to see them again. There could not possibly be an obligation created. And so therefore, it's the easier path to learn how to receive it. And then practice actively receiving it from the people in your life who are, are you know, safe to do that with. Okay. Um, There's not many of them. That's, yeah, well, that's why that's I said that. that trickle, but <laughs> part of cultivating your your environment, right? Mm -hmm. So let me see what else is in here. Yeah, okay. So you've got the betrayal piece going on, but this is a this is a childhood betrayal thing. It's still the parent issues showing up. It's the yeah, I didn't get what I needed. You know, it's a you didn't you didn't take care of me. You didn't do this. You were you were not the perfect parent. You were not even a decent parent. You know, all of these things, right? And so, as you work through and start to shift out of the you know you didn't you didn't give me what I needed and into the I didn't get what I needed piece, this is going to start to release. Okay, because the betrayal piece is a and where we're holding up a human against an idealized archetype. And no matter how good the human is, they're probably not going to meet the archetype. And so what we need to do instead is stop worrying about the archetype and go back to, you know, I didn't get what I need. How do I make sure I get what I need now? Okay. Yeah. Which I thought I'd already dealt with. I, I had forgiven them both and had moved on. So I'm surprised that that's still there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not just still there. It's pretty active. Okay. So, you know, the forgiveness. So did well, you get that even, first? It, it's not even from the past because it's still other family members since my awakening that are causing issues with my parents because they don't like what I'm doing. They associate what I'm doing being devil's work. Right. That I'm not in the light. So then they're in my mother's ear, you know, or they're not supporting my mother because she'd help me. So they're taking it out on her because I'm the daughter and I'm going, I just did a healing on you while you were in the hospital. And now you're turning this all around. And now I'm not the, the good grandchild anymore. I'm like, where is this coming from? 
you know, and then I got to send love and light and, and they're all going through their own things. But yeah, there's a lot of that coming from family members right now that do not want to see me glow up. They don't like that, that I have these abilities. So, so when you said the energy of, I got to send love and light, Mm -hmm. that energy is I have to fix them. Well, no, I just, I just send, I don't try to do anything because it's going to go on deaf's ear. I understand, (laughs) but the energy of love and light is I've got to fix them. I'm going to send love and light instead of just being in compassion. I would like you to, instead of doing the love and light, I would like you to come to compassion. The, the, the church, I'm assuming they're from a Christian faith. They're saying, you know, it's devil's work because that's usually from the Christian faith, right? So if those of us who have come up through the Christian faith know that there is programming, there is massive programming, right? And so they're just operating on their programming, right? And so you can just have compassion for that and just be like, yeah, they're operating on their programming. It is what it is, right? That's just, that's, that's acceptance and compassion, as opposed to I'm going to send love and light, which says you're screwed up and I'm going to send you some love and light to help you. There's judgment in it. You feel it? All right. Yeah. I hear you. I'm taking yes. it all in. So, you know, this is, this is something that we hear a lot in the, in the world of spirituality is, Oh, send them love and light. It's like, that's sending judgment. Okay. And so when you're sending somebody judgment, it's not a surprise that you're getting judgment back. Gotcha. Right. So what you want to do is just accept them for who they are and allow them to be who they are. And that's what it is. That's who they are. Okay. You know, I can't, I can't control you and I can't fix your programming because your programming is what it is. Right. So all I can do is accept who you are and I'm going to accept you and we'll see if that comes back to me. I have no expectation that it will. But if it does, there, there's a greater chance of you receiving a, a, a acceptance back when that's what you're offering, yeah. right? What we, what we focus on is what expands, mm-hmm. right? And so the, the love and light thing is it's still a control pattern. Yeah, it's, it's just- Which a, I didn't know. So that's great that you right. pointed at me yeah, so I don't a, do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a spiritually oriented control pattern. This is just yeah. like all these people who pray for peace. And they're like, oh, I'm going to pray for peace in this one place. It's like, well, how do you know the people there want peace? That's actually black magic. You're putting your will on them. Now you can invite peace, right? I'm I'm going to invite peace into my life. But if I'm going to send peace to somebody else, that's doing something to them that they didn't ask for, right? So, but, but because it's peace, we think it's okay, but it's still, it's still black magic, right? So these are things that we, we don't think about as we go through the process. But anytime you're, you're doing something to someone without their express permission, you're, you're doing black magic, even if you think it's with good intent, because you don't know, you don't know them and you don't know whether or not that's going to be good for them. Some, maybe they need to not be in peace right now. Maybe that's going to give them the next step on their journey, right? We don't know, right? So, Okay. And I'm talking to everybody here, not just you, just so you know. <laughs> so, all right. All right. So where are we? We're in the heart chakra. Anything else we need to talk about here? No. Okay. So we're going to come down into the third chakra. Third chakra is your identity, your inner child, and your power. And the stories you tell yourself to rob yourself of your power. Okay. So your will center, right? So let's start with your identity. We already know you're doing the mask. We've got the clown. Let me see what else we need to know about that. No, they're saying we've already covered everything associated with that. So, so you've got that. Okay. So let's look at the inner child. All right. So you must've done some inner child work because she is skipping down the hallway with a lollipop and she's having a great old time. And she is just loving her lollipop. So I see a really good relationship with your inner child here. This is good. Okay. So let's see what your power stories are. 
Okay. So we've got the not good enough, not surprising. We've been talking about the feedback loop and the failure of people to appreciate you. So that's not surprising. Plus coming up out of a narcissistic environment that automatically creates a not good enough to begin with. So it's, it's adding fuel to the fire for your business, right? Let's see here. So I have a not important story in here, which with rebellion attached to it. So, so there, there is the, I was never treated like I was important. I was an adjunct of other people. I was expected to be a reflection of who they wanted me to be. That's typical in a narcissistic environment that you would have those experiences. The, but this, so, so there's two ways to respond to that. One is to be in rebellion and say, I am important. You will pay attention. I will be important. Ah, that's the rebellion energy. And then there is the, I am going to treat myself as the beloved in my own life. I am going to be important to myself. And I will make sure that I am the first priority in my own world so that I take care of me before I try and take care of anyone else right? Those are two different things. One comes, the rebellion piece comes from a control pattern that's still active. And it's a, you know, you will notice me and, and treat me well, blah, 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 right? It's that, it's that energy comes from a place of, I feel like I'm not important and I need to feel important. And so I'm going to demand it of others. And Instead of, it's a looking outside of yourself for the solution instead of coming inside of yourself. So I applaud you for recognizing that you need to be important in your own life. And I invite you to take it from an outside energy and bring it into an inside energy so that it's a, I am going to treat myself as important. I am going to, because what you get from the outside world is how you treat yourself. You train others to, tr to treat you the way you treat yourself. And so when you start treating yourself as important, when you start making sure that your needs are met on a daily basis, that you're aware of your needs, that's, that's the first step. A lot of us don't even know what we need. Uh, you know, so becoming aware of your own needs and taking care of that first, then that becomes an internal process that then is reflected in the outside world. Because when you respect yourself, other people respect you, right? And that's, you, you learn to set boundaries and things like that, especially, you know, even if you're in environments where people don't respect you, if you've got people who are in your life existing that you, and you start to change this about yourself, you're going to find a lot of pushback and a lot of crossing of boundaries. You need to be able to hold those boundaries you, and people may leave your life as a result. And that's okay. Oh, that looks funny. I, and I have no problem losing more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. cleaning the house. Yeah. And that's all right. Yeah. Sometimes we just need to bring in a new group because uh -huh. we've evolved and we have evolved past them and that's okay. Um, okay. So there's, there's no resonance with those old people anymore. All right. So let me see what else is in here. Nope. That's not there. Definitely got some of the martyr stuff going on. And for you, this is about, it's again about that need to be seen and valued and validated. You, you will kill yourself to try and make things better for somebody else as a way of proving your worth. Um, and again, this is an inner job. You have to prove that to yourself, not to them. And so, you know, this is about finding your value. This is, so this is a, at its core, it's a self-love issue. And this, this is, endemic to the u.s culture you're you're in the u.s right yeah yeah okay this is endemic to the u.s culture the we are not valuable as people unless we're producing in the u.s that's how we value people is through their production right and so to truly love yourself, what you have to recognize is that you have value when you are doing nothing. And that one just sort of makes people go, huh, what? <laughs> because it is contrary to our cultural belief structure. 
But if you go to any, pretty much, uh, I think there's a couple of other culture, cultures like this. I mean, Japan is particularly big on productivity as, as people, but you know, a lot of the cultures in the rest of the world, that is not the case. You are not valuable based on your productivity. You are valuable because you're a person, right? Because you, you are who you are. Right. And if you tell people Latin America is a classic example, I live in Boquete, Panama now. So if I go out into the world here and I talk to the Panamanians and I, you know, if I were to tell them that, that their value is based on their productivity, they would look at me like I was nuts. Right. <laughs> because that's not how the culture is. Right. We have a very toxic culture in the U.S. that says that if we're not doing, we're worthless. Right. And so this is about finding your value when you're doing nothing. And when you can do that, then this particular martyr piece is going to going to dissipate for you. OK, because you won't be needing to prove your value through your martyrdom. OK, well, yeah, and that's a process. I spend an entire year walking people through that process. My, and it's my, also my really design cool. for the projector. My number is martyrdom. Is my oh, joy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely found that one then. Okay. So yeah, I spend a year walking people through that process because it is a complex, it's a complex process to get to that place. But that's, that's what my Woo Square program does. But it is, it, it is a complicated process. So I, I'm not going to suggest that it can happen overnight, but it is something to work towards. Okay. So, okay. All right. Let's see here. Anything else in the third chakra to know about? Mm, okay. You're pushing too hard from this chakra. <laughs> okay. Okay. They're saying that, you know, you're trying to exert your will, which is in opposition to the projector piece, which is supposed to be magnetizing, right? So you should not be pushing out. You should be magnetizing. Right. And so magnetizing isn't an act of pulling. It is an act of being. Okay. So this is a, so when we start in our spiritual journeys, we do a lot of work in from the heart chakra up. It's the, the masculine side of the work. It's the, the great spirit in, in, in native American culture, they call it great spirit and great mystery is the other side of the work the light and the dark, the yin and the yang, right? So the, these are the balances. We spend a lot of time doing that. And so the, the challenge for most people is that when you do that heart chakra up stuff, you're doing a lot of understanding and stripping away and analyzing and letting go and, you know, all of the head-based stuff. We're really good at that, right? But when you get to a certain point in your journey, and this is where you're at, you're, you're at this turning point. When you get a certain point in your journey, you have to go into the darkness. And the darkness is an experiential state, not a thinking state. And so people go into the darkness and they try to understand it. And that's the equivalent of walking into the dark room and looking for the light switch. There is no light switch. Okay, you can't understand the next layer of your journey. You have to experience it. You have to become it. You have to be it, right? And so this for you is about a beingness state. And the magnetis magnetism comes from a state of being, not a state of thinking or doing, right? So this is about stepping into the next layer of your work, of being and becoming the person that you know you were meant to be. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be a little like your brain can't wrap itself around it and that's okay. Brain's not <laughs> supposed to wrap itself around it, but are you getting the energy of what I'm talking about? I'm getting the energy. Yes. And you said being before to me before when I was complaining that things weren't lining up. Right. Um, it's hard. It's hard to be in being and, and magnetizing when you, you're worried about where the money's coming from. Yes. <clears throat> and then, of course, when you don't have it, then you blame <laughs> fingers for the family not supporting you in any way. 
why I'm going through this journey because they don't understand it. So then that's where I get the betrayal piece. If you don't understand what I'm going through and I'm trying to do this and help myself and people and heal and I got things to do. Did you hear what you just said? Yes. And I'll I, want you to, <laughs> okay. I want you to hear what you just said because this is what's keeping you poor right here. Okay. okay. I'm not making enough money and my parents aren't supporting me. What you're doing is you're trying to get the support you did not get as a child through money from them now. And if you are successful, you can't do that because there's no need for it. You need to release the idea that you will ever get support from your parents in order for you to allow money to come into your business. Because that is what is holding you poor right now. Okay. So even, I didn't mean monetarily per se, but just emotional support. Anything. Right. Okay. Anything. Okay. Yeah. That is, that is what the energy behind what you just said was they are not supporting me. And that is you needing to draw in support from them. They are not the right people to support you. Let's be clear. Okay, you could go to a random networking event and find five people better suited to, suited to support you than your parents right now. Right. I know that. Okay. <laughs> so why are you still going back to that well? You're going back to that well because you're attached to getting the support you did not get as a child because you're still pointing your fingers. Well, because I'm trying to be the good daughter and at least having a relationship with them because if that's the point, then I don't, what do I need them for in my life? Like I'm the point, like if you've done me wrong, you're out. So the right. fact that I even allowed them in my space this far, you know what I mean? So, right. and I do, when I do the healing work, my mother will come to realization about stuff she was not, where she wasn't present for me as a kid. And she is apologizing because all of a sudden I'm doing all this healing work. And she said, you know what? I wasn't the perfect mother for you. I didn't do this, this, and this. And I'm like, thank you, mom. But you know, you, you were doing the best you could at that time. And I forgive you. Right. Um, but, but yeah. Yeah. So you're serving as your mother's healer, which is not appropriate. Okay. That's, that's an energetic mismatch. And I'm trying to be nice because the old me, my nickname was Barracuda. And I didn't right. care how anybody felt because right. I was so wounded from my traumas that I was nasty. I was one nasty teenager because I was right. not happy. So where I am now to where I was, I'm a completely different person, but obviously I'm still learning. Yeah. I've had a lot of trauma. <laughs> yeah. And I will tell you, I was this, I was the same. I yeah. was an, I, I was hell on wheels. I was yeah. a steamroller. You get out of my way or I will run you down. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I feel you, you know, we all go through our journeys. We all get where we get. Right. And you know, it, it's, we go as fast as we can and we, we get where we are, you know, but you know, it, it, this is what's in the way right now. Okay. You're still attached to healing them. You're still attached to getting the, as much as you say, I forgive you, you really are attached to getting the apologies right now. Okay. okay? I would, I would highly encourage you to rearrange that energy because yeah. you are not meant to be your parents healer. That is an energetic mismatch. They, there's a hierarchy inherent in, the DNA structure, right? You know, they are not part of your DNA. You are part of theirs, right? And so you need to recognize that, they, that there's a way in which that's the case. And until they are infirm and cannot care for themselves, it is not appropriate for you to be their caretaker or their healer. Okay. So the challenge for you in this space is to be able to step into that new state of being because the, the need for you to get that apology, the need for you to move them into a place where they can finally support you the way that you wanted to be supported, that is actually keeping you from being successful in your business. I didn't recognize that for years in mine. I had the same thing. My dad was only, my dad's way of loving me was to send me money. And so if I had money, he didn't have any way to love me. And when I was not doing well in my business, he would send me disapproval and $500. <laughs> you know? it, was just like, 
<laughs> and I was like, oh, I can't do this right now. And he sent me disapproval and it isn't in time for you to get a real job, you know? But then he sent me $500, right? <laughs> it's just like, so, you know, it was a way that I got love from my father. And so I kept myself poor until I realized that that was the case. And I'm like, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> right? Well, that's, that's where I get, get a real job. Just, just go out and get a job at Target. And I'm like, right. No, I did not have a way to go through all this yeah. healing mess to end up being a cashier at Target. That's not how this works. Yeah. So, you know, but the thing is, is that when you start to look at how do I take care of myself, then you're going to start to recognize the places where you are sabotaging your business, right? How do I, how do I not have to ask them for support, right? Mm-hmm. Emotional, financial, whatever, right? All right. All right. So is that everything in the third chakra? Yes. Okay. That's everything in the third chakra. So let's come down into the second chakra. Okay. Good energy flow. Creativity exists here. That's good. Okay, so I'm getting some energy in the addiction area. And so when we look at addiction, it can be things like TV, sex, drugs, alcohol, people. You can be ad- addicted to spirituality. That's another addiction. We do learning, that. maybe learning. Yeah, that's an addiction. More and more because the other stuff I don't do. Nothing else is going. <laughs> right, but the, but the the energy of it is it's about consumption right? It's about, I must consume, 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 consume. There's never enough, never enough, never enough, right? And the reason that there's never enough is because the energy is being pulled into a chakra in which the problem does not exist. Okay. So typically it's a third chakra issue or a heart chakra issue that's being shoved into the second chakra and you're consuming, consuming, consuming to try and fill the void that is the, the emptiness of the space, which never can be filled because it's in the wrong chakra. Okay. okay. So the, the piece that I want you to look at for this, because it feels like for you, it's the spirituality learning piece, right? Take two weeks off from all spiritual learning. That's your assignment. <laughs> You've done that to me before. Have I? <laughs> I think so. You're like, no learning for you for like a month. Or I think you did that last year. You said something like that. Did and I really? I, I don't remember. That's like a projector. That's what we do. It's like, we're the, for- my thing is I'm the forever student. My enlightenment in my thing will be a forever piece in this lifetime. And I want to know everything. Like I want to solve the life mysteries that everybody's fighting over. And I once understand. a fall, get the, the final answer for everybody and be done with it. Like, this is how it's, <laughs> this is what's really going on. So yes. I geek out on that because that's the only thing I really am connecting with right now. Because Did nothing you else seems to be on last year? Huh? Did you do the assignment last year? <laughs> I believe I did. I believe I did do it the full time that you told me. Whatever time frame that you did, I did and, stick with it and I didn't. And what was your result? I don't remember. I'd have to look back because I did journal. I was journaling at one point every single day. So I might've journaled um, something about it, but I did, I did back off when you, you told me yeah. that and you said, just be, cause that was the point of just be Colleen. You're doing too much. You're here, here, here. You know, your mind was running. Yeah. So that's yeah. interesting. But my sacral chakra had been shut down for so long because I had the rapes and the molestation. So right. for a while, there was not that there was no movement in there. That was my problem area. So now I guess it's cleared out. It is it filtering. Looks really healthy. It looks really Power. good from that perspective. Energetically, there's a lot of energy flowing through it. I'm I'm really pleased to see that. Yeah. Um, the I would say take two weeks off again okay. because what what happens for you? And I would I would basically if I were you I would take and I would put two weeks off in your calendar every six months because you get into this space of consume, 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 and it becomes, it it becomes not learning. It becomes addiction. Okay. Okay. And so you need to break the addiction periodically. It's for you to, to be able to come back into a healthy space around it. Okay. Okay. So, you know, 
Let me see what else is in here. Anything else in here? Yeah, there is an attachment piece, but we've already talked about it. The attachment is, you know, and people have to receive everything that I have to give or else I'm not giving it to them, right? That's the attachment piece. Okay. And that's, a that's again, limiting your income because you can only get the people who are capable of receiving everything you have, right? right. And so- yeah, so that's that's the attachment piece and it's a it's a statement of lack. Right? Any any attachment is a statement of lack. It's like this is the only way it can happen. Therefore, it, it nothing else could possibly work. That is a lack statement. Okay? Okay. Yeah, it feels like this the the sexuality piece is still, you know, push me pull you on it, but it it feels pretty good given what your background is. Okay. So it feels like that's, that's continuing to evolve. So in a healthier direction for you. So anything else in this chakra? Nope. That's everything coming into the root chakra. Good grounding, good energy flow. Let's see here. Check your friends. Yeah, it's interesting. When I go to see your friend relationships, I see struggle. I don't actually see people. I just feel energetic struggle for you. Because I don't have any. Yeah, well, it feels like the the few that you have around you are not not easy relationships. That it's a lot of work. It feels like a lot of struggle. So it's people maybe- I've met along the journey that are doing the same thing I'm doing. I only have one friend from before my awakening, and she doesn't even know everything I do, and she's in another state, so we don't even talk. We'll like text occasionally, but yeah. that was part of my struggles. I don't have any people really around me to connect with locally i have to find people online and then you're limited to whoever's doing a master class or whatever to to jump on yeah yeah Yeah, that that's what it feels like it feels like there's a struggle there and they're Um, all working on their issues too so they all have issues they're they're working through so it's kind of like we help each other out with different segments of what when we're going through it yeah but you don't just have anybody to chill out and just have fun with and, and go out and just do something. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. Where are you located again? I'm in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Right. Okay. I remembered it was East coast. So yeah, the encouragement would be to go out to more events and to meet more people. You know, if you can find events locally or even run an event locally, you know, you could find people that you could, network and connect with and have fun with. But once you step onto a spiritual path like this, you really do need people who are also walking the path because they they won't get it otherwise. So, you know. Yeah. And, and some towns are easier than others to find that in. So mm-hmm. the, okay, let me look at some other pieces in here. All right. There's definitely some fears around safety and security going on. We've kind of talked about that as we've gone through here. So I don't feel like that's there's anything new to tell you there. I think we've covered that one in detail. And you are very well aware of your family tableau. So I'm not going to bother with that either. It's just, you know, talking about your family dynamics and you've already talked about them. So <laughs> there's nothing for me to add to that. So the the last thing to check is the manifestation bubble. So let me just check there. Oh, that's interesting. What's that about? Okay. That's very interesting. Okay, so we talked about planting the seed and going, why aren't you blooming, right? The image I'm getting with your manifestation bubble is that it comes up into your second chakra and then it forms this bubble in your second chakra. And then it hits your third chakra and it explodes much like you ever see those flowers that, that 
pollinate by just poofing and all of the pollen comes out? No, but <laughs> okay. I don't know what kind of flower it is, but I've seen this. And that's the image that I'm getting is that it's like poof and it comes out in the third chakra and it never makes it through the other chakras. Yeah. And this feels like it's that demand for premature, you know, maturation, right? It's that I've got to have the solution now. So it hits your power center. And remember I said you were pushing too much. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is what the push too much is, is it explodes yeah. the manifestation bubble. Uh-huh. Third, third chakra. So it's holding back on the second and then going kaboom in the third and therefore not making it all the way up and out through all of the chakras. So it's, it's be, it's, it's being short circuited. And when you short circuit the manifestation process, you make it smaller because it gathers energy at each chakra. So you're, you're pushing right now. And I know it's very hard not to push when you're trying to get money. So, you know, sometimes the easier path is to get a part-time job to pay the bills so that you can allow yourself to be calm. And this is part of taking care of yourself, right? And say, look, you know, this is not a permanent thing, but it gets me enough money in the door to keep me going until I can allow things to evolve in the way that they need to, right? And I'm not saying a full-time job. I'm just saying enough, Right. I already did that though. I had already done that. And that's where I'm, I'm now at the point it has to be a full-time job. So yes, yes. yes and yes. I've done it. I've tried it and it did not. And I was guided to try it through somebody and it still did not get me to the point to calm me down in the being where anything else to open up. So I will implement this, these other things, but yes, I'm working on getting down a full-time, trying to find full-time employment. Or find a way to not have to have as many bills. Sometimes that's the easier answer is you can. I've lessened it down. I'm on minimal. Like I'm minimal. I I don't even have TV. I'm on like minimal. My car is paid off. There's no much, there's not much more I could drop down and anything. I would argue that. And I, and I, and I bet you, I would win it. Trust me. If I was to tell you everything. Are you living in someone else's house right now? (laughs) I'm renting. Right. That's what I'm saying is that there are, there are ways to make it even more minimal if you need to. So you could find somebody who needs a a caretaker, you know, like a, an elderly person who needs somebody to cook and clean for them. And they, you get room and board in exchange for it. That, that is a way to make it even more minimal. You could go live in a, one of those agro tourist places where you work for your, your room and board and on the farm. Uh, That's a more minimal. You could live in an ashram. That's a more minimal. There's, there's lots of, you know, Lots of ways to make it even more minimal than you are. And I'm not suggesting that you do that. I'm just saying that that I'm I'm expanding your perspective of what's possible. Yeah. This is again that attachment to how things happen, right? Yeah. And so, you know, there's a possibility that somebody may want to fund you and support you while you do this. And you have to be willing to accept that. There's there's a possibility that you may win the lottery tomorrow if you played a ticket or somebody gave you a ticket, right? I mean, if, if you open to the idea that there are ways for things to come in, then you're there's a place that you get into when you don't have enough money. And I've been there. And so I'm talking from experience here, okay? There's a place that you get into when you don't have enough money where you're, you're constantly in a control pattern, mm-hmm. okay? Constantly going, okay, how am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to pay that bill? I'm going to do this and I'm going to move that and I'm going to blah, 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 blah. I'm going to, you know, how, right? Your brain just goes, ah, about it. And that control pattern actually shuts out all of the manifestation ability for the universe to come in, for the matrix to come in and bring you all that you could have. And so the more you can ideate, right? To think about massive numbers of possible ways in which this money could just magically appear in your life, the more you open to it actually happening. Okay. I hear you. And I did try to, I was supposed to live with my grandmother and help her, which was going to help me. Family didn't want it. I'm not talking about family. I'm talking about there. If you go out and try that, and being a, a health person, 
too. I like I I've worked with all those attorney things like you're saying. There is an ashram right in town. There there it's not like it's on the in, in a shopping center. So it's not like what you would think an ashram like you see in um you know on guides or whatever where it's beautifully lit up. It's a second yeah. floor person second floor. But I have thought about that too. Where, where I am that maybe that's where I need to be at this point. But yes, I I I'm even looking for a smaller apartment right now that's for less money to do whatever I can do in the yeah. meantime. Yeah. So I'm open. I, I'm open to all that stuff. Yes. And I've tried to do a house thing. If somebody went away and they had a house, I take care of their house and the dog and the cat sitting. And it's like any type of job that comes through, I apply, nothing happens. Yeah. So it's like, I'm trying and I'm well, like, all right, the will tell you what the path is, right? It's going to yeah. tell you. So you just got to yeah. sit with it long enough for it to tell you. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, I'm, I'm just practice opening your mind as, as yeah. to what the possibilities are and see what shows up because, you know, I mean, maybe you need to relocate to another part of the country. That could be the case too. You know? And I've been told I'm not, this Pennsylvania is not where I'm meant to be, but because my kids are here, I'm supposed to be here. And I go, well, what's the point? If it's, if I'm not, nothing's coming to fruition where I am for me to stay another year or two here when they don't even talk to me. For me to be a mile away from them. What is that helping? Who is that helping? Is it helping me? Is it helping them? Am I here for other people? Because we're all supposed to be strategically placed to help. Then I'm here for other people. But this isn't about other people. This is about you. This is what I'm talking about with refocusing your life around yourself. Yeah. Right. You have been in martyr mode for too long. So I would encourage you to really look at, you know, where do I feel like I'm supposed to be? What And ask the universe to send you signs and say, where am I supposed to be? Show me where my next step is. Rather than being in control and trying to figure it out, let go and look at the universe and go, all right, where am I supposed to be? Tell me, tell me where the next step is. I am looking, I am waiting, I am being patient. I am not going to try and figure it out. I'm going to let you tell me, send me messages. And then pay attention to everything. Songs on the radio, things that random people say, videos that come across your feet, <laughs> everything. Because they will tell I'm you. I'm reading the messages in the messages in the messages. So the <laughs> yeah. But just sit yeah. with it. Sit in the soup of it. Tell, tell them that you're not going to make any decisions for two weeks. And you're just going to sit and receive whatever they have to say. And you're going to wait for all the messages to come through before you make a decision. And put, it, put the two weeks on your calendar. Yeah. And, and until that two weeks happens, you're not allowed to make a decision. Okay. And that okay. way you will receive all of the messages because sometimes they'll send you one piece of the message here, one piece of the message there, one over here, one over there. And if you make the decision too soon, you miss the fullness of the message. Okay. I'm allowed to take business classes or no, I'm not allowed to do any more, you know, cause I'll get on business masterminds and things for tips and just, just, just be for a bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Step out of the learning. And just step into the being because that's it's holding you in your mental space, which is that upper level, you know, that heart chakra up energy. And you need to get into the being state, state, state in order for you to step into the next stage of your evolution. Okay. I will listen. I'll write it on my calendar. I had it. Okay. It's actually underneath the laptop that we're. There you go. All right. Okay. So any questions before we wrap up this reading? Because that's everything I have for you here. No, no. You shed light on a lot of stuff now, the way that I'm thinking that I have to reframe stuff. So I'm very grateful that I was able to come on here. Yay. So, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for being here and sharing your journey with us on the Spirit Guides podcast. Uh, for those of you listening, this is the Ascend Day on the program. Come back and join us for Mystical Mondays on Monday. And just keep in mind that what you focus on is what you attract and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely in Jedi's. Mm -hmm.
So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode.